Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today on this webinar brought to you as always by the Ethical Hacker Network, a free online magazine and community for security professionals. IoT is not only a hot buzzword, but the sheer number of devices shows that it's actually living up to that hype. The benefits of utilizing all those devices can be a game changer for many organizations, but at the pace with which the technology is being adopted, we as security professionals know all too well what happens when speed to market is the highest priority and not security. On the other hand, this gives us a huge opportunity in the field of IoT security, be it pen testing, research, or even bug hunting. I'm Don, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of EHNet, and we welcome you to the basics of IoT hacking for the career pen tester with our guest today, Jacob Holcomb. Sounds great. My name is Jacob Holcomb. Uh, I'm a Principal Security Analyst here at Independent Security Evaluators. IoT, what is it? Well, it's definitely a buzzword. Um, really, conceptually, it isn't really anything new uh, other than the fact that more and more systems are becoming connected. Um, so really, you can think of IoT is as an embedded electronic, kind of like this Trinet router here, right, um, that just connects to the internet and has network connectivity. So IoT, um, pretty much there are tons of inherent security risks, uh, and the reason being for that is the vast attack surface. As I had mentioned uh, in the prior slide, um, there are lots of different pieces of functionality that are included in these systems um, that are right to uh, be attacked. Um, it's Network Exploration Tool and Security Port Scanner. Um, basically what we have here is this very extremely robust tool that allows us to interface with network services via TCP or UDP and it will do things such as connecting to a specific port, issuing some data uh, to determine if the port is open, um, and should it determine a port is open, you have the ability to have it uh, fingerprint said port. Um, and fingerprinting is basically identifying you know, what service may exist on that port. So we'll go ahead and we'll run uh, Nmap. We're gonna do a TCP SIN scan. Um, we're going to skip, skip host discovery, so I don't want to do any pings. And then we're going to have it do service fingerprinting. But as we can see here, ASUS RT AC66U uh, ACSD remote command execution and we have this exploit here uh, alternatively we could have just simply searched for um, the router and maybe some other you know vulnerabilities uh, or exploits would have come up in the list but it, it doesn't look like it. if we search for ASUS we see a ton of stuff right and you guys have a fantastic uh, rest of the month and we'll see you next time
like there's quite a bit of stuff here. AC66U, N56U, you know, some other or ASUS WRT vulnerabilities. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, again, the same results would be produced if you were to go to um, exploitdatabase.com uh, and search for vulnerabilities there or just leverage Google. Uh, but in any case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy um, this script, which happens to be user share exploit DB. I'm actually getting that from up here, the path. Right? Right, and then the specific path for our file, which happens to be this guy here. And we're going to copy it to our current directory. Um, and then if we then, I already had the file there, but I overwrote it. We're actually given uh, the exploit that was uh, part of the exploit DB package here on Kali Linux. And this exploit happens to be um, something that I had published back in 2013. Um, it's a vulnerability um, in Broadcom ACD, ACSD. I clearly have some rock and roll in my mind, <laughs> ACDC. Um, it's a wireless binary that, as I had mentioned, uh, looks for congested network channels and sets your wireless radio to uh, a lesser congested channel. Um, there are multiple buffer overflows in this particular piece of software. Um, I listed a few of the vulnerable commands here, which you can see. Um, we're going to be exploiting the auto channel uh, and param commands. And really, um, a point that I want to, to make here is that uh, ASUS, all of their routers leverage the same firmware, uh, ASUS WRT. When they build the firmware image for a particular router, some pieces of functionality may be disabled, and that's only due to hardware limitations. It really isn't a um, uh, like difference in software. Uh, they just compile it and link it without uh, specific pieces of functionality because the hardware doesn't support it. But the core OS, um, ASUS WRT, runs on all of these systems. So it's very likely if you find a vulnerability in one ASUS router, it impacts their entire product line. And moreover, uh, a lot of the software that runs on these devices, such as ACSD, is developed by a chipset manufacturer, Broadcom in this instance. And those uh, chipset software development kits are given to device manufacturers, and then they are leveraged in the development of a product. So you know we have the ASUS router here. Um, ASUS leveraged um, some of the software from the Broadcom uh, SDK in their products. Then I also have this TrendNet router here, the TrendNet uh, TEW812DRU. This guy here uh, isn't manufactured by ASUS, uh, but leverages um, a lot of that same Broadcom software development kit. So this device actually has that ACSD service as well, and is vulnerable to the same attack due to uh, compil uh, compilation options and just the differences in how these uh, uh, two systems, how the software was built for them, the exploit that I'm demonstrating today will not work on that uh, particular device because the offsets differ uh, within, the, uh, within memory. So you'd have to adjust the offsets. Outside of that, the same vulnerability exists. Um, so you could likely leverage other vulnerabilities like a format string vulnerability to disclose a memory address, uh, you know, somewhere in memory, which would then allow you to, to dynamically calculate these offsets, uh, which could then make the exploit more universal across not only uh, different ASUS devices, but, you know, other products that are leveraging the same vulnerable code. So with that said, let's kind of get into um, some of the source that we see here. Um, pretty much you're seeing that I define a couple of things. This function sig handle is just registering a signal handler. So if you issue control C, you don't get a bunch of like, you know, uh, execution errors in the window. It just kind of handles things gracefully. Um, I have this function targ server. Basically, I'm just looking for an IPv4 address um, from the uh, from the user and then verifying that it's uh, a true IPv4 address by calling the INET um, function. And um, I have that just in a try accept 
exempt. So if there isn't an exception, um, then it's a valid IP address. Otherwise, the INET and 2A would throw an exception and 